let's start from the first layer that we see here. You can see this white structure here. This is the outermost layer of the thoracolumbar fascia. And I told you the thoracolumbar fascia is a tough fascia which closes the intrinsic back muscles. So the intrinsic back muscles are enclosed in the outer layer and the middle layer. So we have split open the outer layer just to show you the thoracolumbar fascia. But we are going to come back to the thoracolumbar fascia a little later. Let me just point out to you the muscles which we are visible right now in this cadaver. You can see this triangular shaped muscle here. This is half a triangle. If we were to open up that side also, we will see another half of a triangle. So the two together constitutes a muscle like a trapezium. That's why this muscle is called the trapezius. The trapezius has got three sets of fibers, a descending set of fiber, a horizontal set of fiber, and ascending set of fibers. And you can see the dashed fibers. But we shall talk more about the trapezius when we come to the upper limb because it's a muscle acting on the pectoral limb. And it's a unique muscle in the sense that it is not supplied by the brachial plexus also. Trapezius is supplied by cranial nerve number 11, that is accessory nerve. So now let me, I have already split open the trapezius at its attachment to the spinous processes here. Let me just reflect the trapezius. So this is the, one of the large muscles of the extrinsic group of back muscles, which I said is the, not the true muscles. Okay, so now I have reflected the trapezius. Now let's come to the next big muscle, which is also not the true back muscle. And that is this one, which has been split here. This is the latissimus dorsi. It is really a big and a very powerful muscle, and it is going all the way and it gets attached to the arm, but we have cut it here. The unique thing about this latissimus dorsi is that it's got an extensive origin. It takes origin from the iliac crest and it takes quite a big of, bit of origin from the outermost layer of the thoracolumbar fascia. And you can see it is actually taking origin from the thoracolumbar fascia. You can see it here. And then it continues. So, but we are going to talk again about the latissimus dorsi when we come to the pectoral girdle, upper limb again. Now that I have reflected the trapezius and I have shown you the latissimus dorsi, which are the two extrinsic back muscles which I told you were not the true, then let's come to the next layer. We can see a muscle here. This muscle that you see, this is the levator scapulae. This muscle that you see next, this is the rhomboids minor. And the next muscle that you see, this one, is the rhomboids major. So levator scapulae, rhomboids minor, rhomboids major. They are all inserted onto the medial border of the scapula here. This is the scapula. And again, we will see the, these three muscles. They are also extrinsic back muscles, but they are the intermediate group. And they do not act on the back. They are part of the pectoral girdle muscles. Now I'm going to reflect the rhomboids major, rhomboids minor. Incidentally, I have exposed the neurovascular bundle which runs deep to the attachment of the levator scapulae and the rhomboids minor. But we shall talk more about the neurovascular structures when we come to these respective muscles later on. We see yet one more layer of muscle. And I'm lifting it up now here. What is this muscle? Any cases? This is the serratus posterior superior. This was also an extrinsic back muscle, not the true back muscle. And this, I told you, is an accessory muscle of respiration. And the serratus posterior superior, and you can see the fibers are running like this. They are supplied by the intercostal nerves. And they are accessory muscles of respiration. And this is that muscle here. I'm lifting it up here. And all of you can see much more clearly here. This is located deep to the rhomboids. So I have to reflect the rhomboids to show you this. So your question is, where is the serratus posterior? Inferior. The serratus posterior inferior is located deep to the latissimus dorsi. And for that, we have cut it here and we can see a muscle underneath this muscle here. And I have cut the latissimus dorsi from here also so that we can see this muscle that is running down like this. These are some of the fibers. These are the fibers of the serratus posterior inferior. This is also an accessory muscle of respiration. This is also an extrinsic back muscle. It is not a true back muscle. And it is also supplies, supplied by the 
intercostal nerves. So to summarize quickly, we have seen the trapezius, we have seen the latissimus dorsi, we have seen the elevator scapulae, rhomboids minor, rhomboids major, and then we have seen the intermediate group of extrinsic back muscles, namely the serratus posterior superior and the serratus posterior inferior. Now let's come to the true back muscles or the deep or the intrinsic back muscles. And our definition was that they are acting directly on the back. They are enclosed by the two layers of thoracolumbar fascia. One was the outermost layer and the other is the middle layer and they are supplied by the dorsal gramma. So now let's come back again to our thoracolumbar fascia. We have split open the outer layer of the thoracolumbar fascia and you can see how thick and strong it is. This is the outer layer of the thoracolumbar fascia. So I'm going to, I'll need somebody here to re reflect for me. Those of you who are wearing gloves can do that for me. And as I told you, attaching, uh, taking origin from the outermost layer of the thoracolumbar fascia was the latissimus dorsal. And you can see it taking origin from there. <laughs> so we will reflect the other part of it also. So with that, I have reflected the latissimus dorsi also. Now we are seeing the, this tough, strong muscle which I made all of you feel. And what name did we give it? Erector. We call it erector spinae or the sacrospinalis muscle, the true intrinsic back muscles, the most strong back muscles, the postural muscle which helps to maintain your erect posture. This muscle which I'm lifting up now, what is this? This is the erector spinae, part of it. And what was the lateral most muscle of the erector spinae group? Iliocostalis. It is taking origin from the iliac bone here. And it, as it goes up, it giving slips of fibers which you can see are getting attached to the ribs here. That's why it's called iliocostalis. And depending on where it is attached, it is called iliocostalis lumborum, iliocostalis thoracis, iliocostalis cervicis. But we will not bother about the individual subcomponents of them. So this is the lateral most group, and this is the one which is giving you the bulk of your erected spine. Going further, medially, what was the next group? The next group was this muscle here. The longest muscle, which goes all the way up to the to the occipital bone. That's why we call it the longest muscle. That was the next medial one. So after the iliocostalis, we have the longest muscle. And I have again split open this facial structure to show you the longest muscle. So the medial most is the longest muscle. And not the medial most, the second leg. And then finally, the smallest of this group, the medial most group, was the spinalis, which is right next to the spinous processes. To see that, I have split open these aponeurotic tendinous structures and we can see the small muscle fibers here. We can see these muscle fibers here. These are the spinalis muscle and you can see. Can you hold it here for me? These are the spinalis muscle fibers. So iliocostalis, Longismus, spinalis. These are the true posture muscles, erector spinae. And if we remove this, we will see the next group, that is the transversal spinalis. Why are they called transversal spinalis? Because they are located in the angle between the spinalis. transverse process and the spinous process. And we had seen that they are also divided into three groups, the semispinalis, multifidus and rotators, but they are not so clinically important as this group. So we have shown you the intermediate group of the intrinsic back muscles and not shown you, but I told you about the deep group of intrinsic back muscles. But one small group still remains, the superficial group of intrinsic back muscles. Remember bandage, splenius capitis and splenius services, and you saw how they were distributed. Let's come to the splenius group here. This muscle that you see here, this is the splenius. The splenius services is the lower one and the upper fibers are the splenius capitis. 
So if you were to take this side and you were to take this side, they will be like this and they will be oriented like this. So this is the superficial group of the intrinsic back muscles. The splenius capitis and the splenius cervices. And once we reflect the splenius capitis and the splenius cervices, we can see the next group which I have already described to you and we can see the fibers of the longismus going up. We can see the fibers of the longismus going up and my finger is going in. That is where it gets attached to the occipital bone. So we have seen the three layers. We have seen the splenius capitis and the cervices. We have seen the erector spinae group and we have mentioned about the transversal spinalis. So these are the muscles of the intrinsic group and the extrinsic group that I wanted to show you. That's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. Dr. Sanjay Sanyal signing out.